I already have a portrait I want to put at the top, so let's get that in here. And let's add some sidebar content to the layout. Start off with that portrait. Then came the Twitter section, starting with a header. And a container for the content. And finally, a link to the RSS feed at the bottom. OK, these new items need styles. Let's just have a look first. OK, the content is right, but that's not really much of a sidebar. Sidebar needs to be at the side, and we'll leave a bit of space. 200 is good. OK, that's much better. So it looks like the posts are still centered on the whole page, not just the main column. The main area needs a margin so it doesn't overlap with the sidebar. The sidebar is 200 plus 15 padding on each side, so 230. Good. So the static content on the sidebar looks good, but still unstyled. And we're obviously missing the actual Twitter data. So let's stop debugging and style those elements. The portrait, Twitter header, tweets, and feed link, all to get some space. Now let's get that Twitter data. We'll do this on the client, so we need a script. Twitter, and we need to include the script. OK, we'll start with a Twitter object and an update function. We'll need the name, the count, and where to put the data. Request the data. And let's see where that comes from. The Twitter API documentation. And what's going on here? OK, user timeline. We'll want to specify screen name and count. And let's see what we get back. We want that created at time and the text. OK, let's get that address.
fill in the name. and the count. We'll also need the data type and handlers. If we get an error, just display it. And if we succeed, We'll show the data in our element. The error doesn't do much. And success will take the data and put it into the element. We'll clear out that element and make a list. So for each tweet, we'll get the time from created at. And get the message from the text. Now we append to the list a list item with the time and the message. Okay, so that should do something. Wait, we actually need to call this. So update, username Twitter, five tweets, and into the tweet element. Okay, now it should actually do something. Hmm, that's not so good. Let's see the error. No transport. Okay, so we just can't connect to an external server for this. We just need to change the data type for cross-site scripting. Okay. So the message looks good, but the date is still broken. Let's see what's going on here. There's the time. Ah, uh, there's no time zone in this. Since there isn't one, I guess it's probably UTC. So let's just put UTC in there. Okay. 
Okay, that's a bit better. Uh, we actually have a time now, but it looks like it's just a number of milliseconds. What we really want is the relative time like Twitter usually displays. So let's get the relative time. And implement that. Start with the difference from now. And list all the possible units. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, and weeks. And we'll need the maximum of each unit. 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 24 hours, 7 days. Okay, for each unit, if it's overflowed, and there are more units, go to the next unit. Divide out the unit, and convert back to integer. Now we can get the unit name, and if necessary, pluralize it. OK, and return a nice string. Oh, that's better. The text looks right. Now we just need to style it. Let's go back to the CSS. The list is unpadded and without bullets. Tweet is left aligned. Small font and spaced out. And the time is just bold. Perfect. OK, it's a blog. I think that about wraps it up. If you were following along and want to take this further, you can certainly redesign the UI, maybe add some more features, and switch it to SSL if you want better security. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you'd like to see more, head on over to mattblagden.com and take a look around. Thanks for watching.